We've got a 2002 Town and Country having all kinds of starter issues where it's very intermittent. Normally it does not crank, um, but uh, nothing. Did it like 10 or 12 times. Sometimes it wants to start. Sometimes you gotta like kind of turn the steering wheel and then it'll want to start. Doesn't matter what you do. Eventually it starts. Sometimes if you flip the key around, it'll start. It does sometimes say like done and stuff over here. Not exactly certain what that means. Sometimes a trip and then a P. Nothing I read online can tell me what that is. Just kind of random. Sometimes if you pull it all the way back, push it all the way forward, there it started. Super weird. I think I might know what it is. It does have enough power. I've pulled the battery out, got it tested. Um, they did say it needed a light recharge, but it was mostly good. I took the starter out, which is down underneath here. You have to go underneath. Um, you need a 13 to 15 millimeter with a ratchet, um, not great to easy to get in or out. Um, took that off, took it to the auto parts store. They said it was perfectly fine, even though it's almost 20 years old now. Um, and so I started testing, well, let's make sure we got a good ground. So I cleaned up all my grounds and positive cables. Um, the grounds lead back underneath here, and then there's two underneath down under here. Um, literally sanded them, got them as nice as I could get still having the same issue again it would start occasionally sometimes when it was warmer like the engine itself would start up uh better the next time but it was no guarantee sometimes it was 20 30 cranks before you ever got it i'm going to take you inside because i've kind of destroyed uh what well, looks pretty pretty messed up here in my opinion um i changed out right there you can see the um ignition switch with the little red tab there, um, switched that out. Um, I already had got a new key because uh, the old key was kind of bad. Don't ever hit it with a hammer like some of the YouTube videos do. If you have to get home and do that, that's fine, but don't do that. It ended up ruining my ignition switch. My brother used to own this car um, and the, the, the cylinder just was a wreck. Um, changed that out, changed out the actuator between the two none of that helped at all maybe like the first time it kind of wanted to start up and so i've been trying to figure out what the heck i need to do to get this thing working um we do have another vehicle but it is surely helpful to have two vehicles and so i had my wife just a few minutes ago uh start the car after i there's a little tab here that's with the ipm fuse box i literally just started shaking it like that she cranked it up and the first time it started right away and i'm like oh that's never happened before where that works um so it gave me the idea to do this video right now first thing you're going to do is take off your negative 10 millimeter take off negative put it off to the side you don't want anything bad to happen to your system um, you see a multimeter here as I'm taking off the positive. I literally have tested grounds on everything. I have tested how many volts, how much droppage we have. Everything seemed to be good and in range. I was having almost 12.7 volts for the battery. Um, so yeah, you move that out. Um, I'm not going to lie. I already cheated before I did this video and I did remove this. This is a 13 millimeter. You will have to take this bolt out. Um, before you can pull the battery, but I kind of cheated and did that a little bit earlier. So I'm sorry about that. That may have looked a little confusing. So you have power and it comes back and around. It's this top one and these fuse boxes, you can hear and hear at the same time, get it off. I did check every relay. I checked every fuse. Everything was good. Um, one little tip underneath here, you can see everything. And let's just say it was, you thought it might've been one of the different relays, like, I don't even know. Uh, like, I literally tested every single relay. Every one of them was good. Like, let's say you thought it was the starter relay, which is this big, huge one. You can change it out with a different relay of the same size. 
Um, so I actually switched it out right here with this front blower relay, which is like the front blower of your car. This car has both a front and a rear blower because it is a pretty big vehicle. Um, and so that is AC heat, switch them out, turn on your air conditioning or heat. We need heat here in Ohio because it is cold today. Um, and it worked fine. Um, tested all of them. They are all in good shape there. And so you'll kind of want to put that back on, but I'm just going to leave it off for this video so you can kind of see what's going on. If I can get it. Sometimes it's a booger. So you take your screwdriver, put it down on the side. It's going to be kind of hard to see where this video is, where the camera is mounted. But if you push, there's a little tab. Um, I have not been able to find out how to pull the whole thing off. But as you begin to pull it up, it is a pain in the butt because these wires have not moved in 20 years, which is why we're going to find out why we have an issue. You're going to take screwdriver, big red power. You push this little thing back. And you pull it, kind of wiggle it, get it all out of there. Maybe I didn't push that tab back far enough. There it goes. That click helped. Let me know. Oh, right there. And you can already see all the green crap on it. And so this is what we're going to be working on. And so, um, yeah, it's got a lot of corrosion in it. So this might be kind of the hardest part that you have to actually pull this thing once it's disconnected make sure that's out all the way and actually i took some of the beautiful electric tape that was already pretty much dead pulled it off to give me even a little bit more room and then you just kind of have to make sure it's loose make sure this piece is disconnected as well and your green clip is out um and i just kind of slid that down and i just started pulling really hard and it did come off I'm going to clean this up really well with some 200 grit sandpaper um, and hopefully that corrosion was part of the problem why it intermittently did not start. Sometimes I'd have to crank it 20 or 30 times uh, just to get it to go. Um, you can see down in the, the bay here there's tons of green stuff everywhere um, from corrosion so don't let that touch that. Just even though it's there's no battery it's just always good not to short anything out in your system. All I had was uh, 220 grit, but it will do the job. And you just, the goal of this is to make the best connection possible. And to get all this other junk off of it. This was probably copper at one time, as you can see as I begin to do this, you can see the copper coming back through, especially right here on the, the terminal jacket, wow. It had a lot of corrosion on it. The higher number of the sandpaper, the, the finer the grit is on it. And not as coarse. It does the job pretty well. You can fold the sandpaper over like I was doing and just kind of go back and forth. Remember, don't put too much pressure on this, this, this part. But, uh, yeah, probably take a minute or two to do this. Wow, looks almost copper again. You want to look at the underside as well, which is not as done as well. That's why I'm spending a little extra time on it. And this thing, remember it goes right back in. There's little teeth that you can see that the teeth go into. And that slides right back down in there. Make sure it's nice and good in there. And then your little green bracket goes not on this side, it goes on the underside. And it just helps hold everything in there nice and secure once you're pushed in all the way. It may take a little bit of finagling and you should hear it click, and that's good on that. And then you're gonna bring this back up. And this just helps make sure that your cable does not slide out the backside. So those two little teeth go in, 
and you should see them expand out. And it kind of almost touches the green just to make sure that's good. We'll plug that back in, make sure you run it down and under like I'm going to do. You may have to use your screwdriver again because everything's been kind of moved around a bit. And this little red tab will be towards you as you're pushing this in. Which again, there's kind of just a bunch of crap. You gotta kind of finagle it around as good as you can. Make sure this little red tab is pushed back before you put it on there. You gotta get it just right, which is not always easy. Cause when those cables have sat there for 20 years and your fingers are freezing cause you live in Ohio, and it's 20 degrees outside, you'll understand. You just kinda gotta get it as good as you can and then it will eventually go down and on. Okay, so one thing I learned, I think I put it in upside down because the teeth are pushing down that way. So, so kind of re-show you how to do it from the beginning. I guess I put it in upside down. That's why it was not wanting to go in there very easily. Remember, it's this side kind of works a little better if it goes first. But then this side just makes it a little easier because you don't have all that plastic junk in the front. And that green clip comes out. So from the top, I'm going to show you this was put in the right way the first time so this needs to be this way where you see the copper right there and see that fit a lot smoother that time in should have realized that when it wasn't really wanting to do what it wanted to do because it's sat that way for almost 20 years now it's going to be pretty predictable on what it likes and again, this piece just goes in. You should hear it snap in. And this should be a little easier to put in this time. Boom. Make sure you push that red back down. And then you're gonna wanna make sure all your cables are in and not getting bent. And then that locks in like that. That goes in there. You put your battery back in. Sorry, I kicked the camera. Reverse order is the first time. Positive. Ten millimeter. Again. It's really important. Sometimes this screw gets pushed out. I always try to do it by hand first to make sure I get the alignment I want. tighten this down you do not want to over tighten it these ones are really cheap on these dodges or chryslers but you do want it to where it will not wiggle and then this on this side and for some reason i don't know if it's because i got it used i think it has a different bolt than what it originally had so i do have to hold it down with a 10 millimeter as well then we will go crank it hope and pray that it worked
as it now is beginning to rain and snow. So now that we got that all clean, let's go ahead and try to start the car to see if that was the problem. First time it worked, so that was it. It was uh, right inside here, inside the fuse box where that uh, power cord came in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and like and subscribe if this video was helpful.